What is up, Nets fans? Welcome to the Brooklyn Buzz. I'm your host, Nick Fay. No Jack Manuel, but with me today, Will Jackson. Will, how are we doing? Uh, you know, not great, Nick, after that heartbreaking loss, but I uh, got over it real quick after Packers win. How about you? Yeah, similar uh, feeling over here. Obviously, the Nets have not made life easy for themselves or their fans. Three close games in the season, two overtime, and last night they lost 134-133. Jay Crowder with the buzzer beater three. It was some heartbreak. It was, and I mean, you just look at the last three games that we've played, it all came down to either overtime or the last few seconds of the game, and you know, just as easily as we could be 3-0, and we could be 0-3, so I mean, just look at, we're 1-2, and we haven't been playing the best defense at all, I mean, we've allowed over 115, uh, over 105 points in each game, I just think that we have a lot of things to tighten up, but we have a lot of time to do it. Yeah, the one positive is it seems a lot of these issues are correctable. Before we get into it, though, quick reminder, you can find us on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, OTGBasketball.com, Google Play, Dash Radio, YouTube, and NetsRepublic.com. Also, head to DSGNTree.com slash Off the Glass. Grab some Brooklyn Buzz tees. But getting back to last night, what was the biggest issue for you in this loss? The biggest issue for me was the defense. I just... You let a team like Memphis put up 134 points on you, you're not going to win the game. I think that we really need to tighten that up. And like you said, there's a lot of little issues that we can correct throughout the game or throughout the season that we just aren't doing right now. And it's just little like mechanical things that, you know, could take one or two practices, one or two games to fix. So I think that was a huge issue for me. What about you, Nick? Yeah, no, the defense stuck out. I think anytime you're facing a young team, the first thing you want to do is disrupt them, kind of force them out of their comfort zone, don't allow them to get confidence. The Nets did the exact opposite of that. Memphis scored 35 in the first quarter, and everything was easy. They just weren't putting enough effort in defensively. Kyrie talked about it post game. There wasn't enough physicality, and I think just the Nets' effort defensively has not been great consistently through 48 minutes. There's been a couple stretches where, okay, you guys are pretty good defensively. You can force a couple steals, turn on transition buckets. But it hasn't happened for the course of an entire game. And it seems like the first half defense has just been bad to start the game, specifically the first quarter. They just need to come out with more energy on that side of the floor. You know, energy is a huge thing for defense. I mean, we saw it last year in a lot of games where the Nets just didn't have energy and they fell behind late and couldn't come back. And, I mean, this year it's kind of been the same thing. But when you have a player like Kyrie, he'll always make it close at the end. So I think that's something that the Nets fans have to look forward to, just having a player like Kyrie Irving be able to – pull you back out of a deficit like he did today and like he did against Minnesota. So I think that's one thing that we have to look forward to. Yeah, it's one positive you have the player, but then I think it's been mentioned too, is like you exert so much energy trying to come back by the time you get into the fourth quarter and overtime, you're gassed out. Another issue for the Nets was turnovers. It was against the Knicks as well. 17 last night against Memphis, not quite as much as 26, but still not a good number against arguably a bad team. No, and some of them were really bad turnovers. And, I mean, I think any basketball fan knows that turnovers lose basketball games. You can't be turning the ball over 20, what was it, 26, 27 against the Knicks? Yeah. And then 17 against a team like Memphis, a young team like Memphis, who's going to make mistakes, who's not as tight defensively. That's something that the Nets really, really need to tighten up. I mean, Karis LeVert, I know he's been turning it over a bit. Uh, Torian Prince as well. He had four last night. That's just something that can't happen against a team like Memphis. Yeah, 100%, and especially a guy like Torian Prince, who's not necessarily one of your playmakers. Four turnovers is just way too much. If it happens with, you know, Kyrie, Karis, Spence, it's a little bit more acceptable because they have the ball so much. But from one of your wing guys, it's essentially a 3 and D. You want to see him clean that up. But what do you think about the offense? I know a lot of fans have been talking about it being a little bit too ISO heavy, not as much ball movement as we saw last season. Yeah, I mean, there were some possessions where I think guys like Kyrie and Spencer were just holding on to the ball too long. I think that they were just trying to be, you know, like hero ball, as Richard Jefferson said. I think that they were just trying to find a shot for themselves and not maybe pass it up to a guy like Joe Harris, a Korean friend, who we know can hit the three ball. Um, I mean, Kyrie Irving took 27 shots last night. That's a lot. But in an overtime game, I guess it's okay. I think the offense is still – the offense is clicking more than it did earlier, like against Minnesota. I think early on we struggled a lot. But, I mean, I think over the last two games we've really, like, kind of gotten better at some things especially uh passing the ball I mean Spencer Dinwiddie did eight assists off the bench Kyrie at seven I think that it's getting better but I think there's a lot of things that need to improve yeah there's definitely possessions where the ball just is sticking a little bit too much and guys you know that's part of their game but I think maybe it'll be on Kenny to adjust the offensive touch to put them in a little bit more position where they're driving and cutting instead of so three-point heavy with some of the guys preferring to attack the rim 
but it, it did look like it was improving. And it's going to be a work in progress when you have so many new players. I think it's easy to forget the Nets have nine new players and one of them being yep. one of the best players in the league that's going to have one of the highest usage rates in the league. It's just going to be an adjustment period for a lot of guys. What do you think about the DeAndre Jordan uh, and Jared Allen battle? We saw DeAndre start last night. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that DeAndre started just because, you know, Jared has started every game, including the preseason this season, but I get it. Jared struggled against the Knicks. Uh, Jared actually ended up playing a lot more minutes than DeAndre Jordan. Jordan played 23, Allen played 27, and Allen, you know, on the stat line, had a better game, 14 points and uh, 13 rebounds. So I think that it was solid. And, I mean, I know we don't live or die by the plus ma- minus, but Jared Allen was plus 8 and DeAndre Jordan was minus 5, so I think that does say something, especially because the centers have so much impact defensively on the game. I think Allen was better than he was against the Knicks. He had four offensive rebounds, but I think he definitely has more to improve while DeAndre Jordan was just doing his thing regularly. The other thing that I wanted to say about Allen was I think he was finally getting in rhythm again offensively. He was catching those alley hoops. He was finishing at the rim, and I think that's big for the Nets. And I just think he has a better feel for Spence and Karras than Kyrie. Obviously, he's played with Spence and Karras for a while now. And I agree. I think Jared Allen responded to essentially being benched. He attacked the rim a lot more aggressively and violently, got himself to the free throw line, and he knocked down his free throws. You mentioned DeAndre. At this point, we kind of know what we're getting. Jared has way more of an upside and a potential, especially defensively with his mobility, where DeAndre, you're not really going to ask him to come out of the paint. Talking about defense, I know we mentioned a little bit before. Do you think the Nets need to adjust their pick-and-roll defense? Obviously, they're trying to force the mid-range, but it puts a ton of pressure on the guards to get over screens on a regular basis and disrupt everything, while you're also asking the guards to essentially score and create everything on the other end. Yeah, I mean, I think just in uh, in total, the Nets need to adjust their defense a little bit. Uh, when you Like I said, we allowed a lot of points, and that just can't happen against a young team. I think we need to not only adjust our pick-and-roll defense, our perimeter defense, our interior defense. I mean, John Morant just got everything inside. He ended up with 30 points. Um, that, that can't happen again. I mean, John Morant is great. I love him. He's a great player. He shot 60% last night. But as a rookie playing his third-ever game, that just that can't happen against a, a more experienced team like Brooklyn. And essentially all he had to do was get a high pick and then he was going to attack the rim. And he's so quick that it's tough for a defender to ask him to come from the paint to the three-point line and try to catch up to him because he can adjust his body so well. So Morant played great, but the Nets didn't adjust. And you just can't allow those easy baskets. You know, they were just lay-ins at different points. So I agree with you. I think they need to adjust the pick-and-roll defense, see what they can do. But you mentioned the perimeter defense. I think just putting a body on people at the three-point line is you know, something. They, yeah, like I, you don't have to really essentially lock a guy like Valanciunas down, but a little pressure. And then on some of the other guys, they were just getting wide open looks from three. And not all of them were bad three-point shooters. Some of them were mediocre. But if you see a guy's kind of heating up that night, you got to adjust. And I just think there wasn't enough adjustments. Some of that's on coaching. Some of that's on the players being on the floor. But it was just a sloppy game from a mental perspective. Yeah, Memphis went 14 of 33 from long range. And you look at the guys who took the most shots. Dylan Brooke, 3 of 6. Violent Tunis, 3 of 5. Darren Jackson, 2 of 4. Jay Crowder with the bad shot, 2 of 5. I mean, those are the guys taking the most shots. And they are having, you know, those are really good percentages for a game. That just can't happen. Yeah, 100%. Now, uh, have you liked the rotations? You know, Kenny's adjusted a little bit, you know, subbing Karras out early, going to the bench, uh, bringing in Garrett Temple. Do you think those rotations that we have right now are good or he should uh, continue to work with them? Yeah, I mean, one thing I found interesting was that he went to Jared Allen really early last mm-hmm. night. And, I mean, I do like that because I think Allen deserves more minutes than Jordan just because Allen is only, what, 21 and he can really develop a lot. Um but the rotations, I think the starting rotation is fine. I don't want to change that. I know you mentioned to me once that maybe we could get Joe Harris out of the rotation to get more spacing on the bench. But I don't know. I think the rotation is fine right now on the bench. I think it's just more about who plays with each other. I think that Spencer Dinwiddie and Jared Allen need to be on the floor with each other. I don't think that Dinwiddie necessarily plays well with Jordan. And I don't think that Allen plays well with Kyrie that much. Um, so I think that's one thing that could change. And then as for just the wing and guard play, I think, What we're doing right now is all right. I mean, we're scoring. That's not the problem. The problem is defense right now. So I I think that's something that will just improve as we play more together. Because like you mentioned, we have a lot of new players. and It's going to take a lot of time to get in sync, not only offensively, but defensively as well. 
Yeah, I think uh, the defense is going to take some time, especially communication. You see a couple of plays every game where, hey, I thought you were going to switch or I thought you were going to roll. The help defense also isn't great. We saw the Nets defense be successful last year when they were helping a lot on attacks of the rim. Last night, you mentioned John Moran attacking the rim. There just wasn't enough help, and I think a lot of that will come with communication. But kind of getting to the players a little bit, what did you think about Kyrie's game? Obviously, another big one, 37 points. Not a great shooting percentage, 11 to 27, but 5 to 12 from three and 10 free throws. I mean, another 37 points for him. He's he's a player that Nets fans have not had since the Jason Kidd era. He is better than what Dan Williams was when he was in his prime. He is better than whatever we had with, you know, between Darren Williams and Kyrie Irving. I mean, what, we had Jared Jack starting. It's just we have not had a player like Kyrie Irving in so long, and it's just such ref- a refreshment to see a player be able to, whenever he puts a shot up, shot up, you hold your breath and like, oh my god, that's a ridiculous shot, is it going in? And a lot of times it did. I mean, in the first quarter, he had three plays that are probably going to be on Sports Center top ten. I mean, he's just, he's an incredible player, and I can't say enough about him, but, I mean, just looking at this game specifically, 10 of 11 from free throws is something that the Nets also haven't seen in a while. Uh, I know we struggled with free throws a lot last year with D'Angelo and Cares and Spencer all not having great free throw percentages. But Kyrie, he's missed two free throws this year, and I think he's taken at least 10 per game so far. And he's just, or somewhere close to that. Um, so just free throws have been much improved with him, um, close to what we had last year. Like I said, he took 27 shots. That's a lot when you have the players that we have, but he also made 40% of them, so I'm not mad. And then from three, he hit 41% from three. So overall, like I'm not mad at Kyrie taking all those shots because he is Kyrie Irving. Yeah, I think uh, he's earned that respect to shoot those shots. You know, obviously at times the ball does get a little sticky, but that's part of his game. You mentioned the highlight plays. I think it's just turned the Nets' enjoyment up another level. You know, you're watching the game, and this guy's going to guarantee you like three to five highlight plays. And I like his mix of scoring on all levels. You know, he includes a three-point shot, the mid-range shot, puts some floaters in there, gets to the lane, gets to the rim, gets to the free throw line. Obviously, I think those assist numbers could get up a little bit more, but a lot of that, too, was just guys missing wide-open threes. And that first half, Joe Harris and Torian Prince were missing wide-open shots, Karis Savert, Spencer Dinwiddie. So if guys can continue to knock down, I think the offense is showing signs of being really, really good. Now talking about his uh, backcourt duo, Karis Savert, Got off to a slow start, but he finished with a nice stat line. 27 points, 11 to 22, 3 of 7 from 3, 3 free throw attempts, and 5 assists. Yeah, I think this was his best game so far this season. 27 points, like you said. Um, I think that he started to really click with Kyrie, especially later on in the game. Um, he started making those three-point shots. He made um, he made three of them. He also started to make those you know, little floater mid-range shots that we see him make all the time. Uh, I think that they were like – I think he hit – like three in a row at one point to cut – or he went on a run at one point where he yeah, cut he the lead, Grizzlies lead from like 15 to 6 by himself, and he was just doing those little floater mid-range shots that he's so good at. I think Harris has impressed me this game. Um, I know he struggled early on. He was benched, I think, two minutes into the game against the Knicks. And, I mean, maybe that was for rotation. Maybe it was for something else. Like you said, it could have been for defense. Who knows? But um, I think Harris is just – He's still improving. You know, he's not a star player yet. I think he can become that. But I think this was a great step to seeing what this backcourt can do in the future. And I think it was a really positive sign that he started off bad. You know, he had a mm-hmm. bad start to this game. I think he was either 1-7 of seven or 0-7. Seven, and he looked out of sync. But he bounced back and he was able to drop 27-11-22. That's what a star player does. And I think yep. Karras having those runs that you mentioned. And I loved his aggressive attacks of the rim. And when he's hitting that floater slash push shot the way he is in that pick and roll situation, he's extremely tough to defend because of his ability to pass inside. So really nice building block game for Karras. Talking and about our th- – oh, go ahead, wait, Will. One more thing about Karras, something that kind of surprised me, is that he played the most minutes on the team last night. And usually – when a player struggles early, Kenny benches them for the fourth quarter, but he stuck with Karras and it really paid off for him. So I think that was something that just surprised me. And I think Kenny uh, is going to have to play Karras. I think he was upset yep. against the Knicks in terms of defense. It just wasn't the intensity. But we saw in that fourth quarter, he was able to draw an offensive foul on a moving screen. And he just puts a lot of intensity on the ball and gets deflections. He's one guy that you can count on in the starters that's going to make an impact defensively. I think that's why Kenny was so upset against the Knicks. But this is a really good two-way game for Karras and hopefully continues to build off that. But getting to Spencer... 16 points, uh, had eight free throws, three of 13 from the field, two of seven from three, eight assists, though, but it felt like at times he was chucking a little bit. 
Yeah, you know, 313 is just, you know, it's got awful. You can't do that. 23% and then 2 of 7 from 3. I mean, he was taking those, you know, step back corner threes that he likes to take and they just weren't going in. He did have uh, 8 of 10 from the free throw line, though. So, I mean, we will take that any day of the week from him. But, I mean, just both defensively and offensively, he was minus 7 tonight. He just, he did, he clearly did not have his best game of the season tonight. He was not on it. And I think that's something that the Nets are going to need moving forward because, we know how big of a piece that he can be to this team. We've seen it so many times, him be able to win us games. And if he's not on, if he's going to shoot 27%, 23% from the field, I mean, that's just the Nets aren't going to win that game this show tonight. Yeah, 100%. And I think just on some of those step-back threes, it's just like, come on, Spencer, attack the big, yep. take him to the rim. You're getting free throw calls tonight. Just continue to build on that. But obviously it's going to be tough for all three guards to have a great game on the same night, but it's and- not terrible. Yeah, and are you surprised at how much we're seeing the three guard lineup this year? Um, uh, not really. I think um, it's going to be something Kenny wants to do moving forward down the line because this is probably your three best players in the team. And long as Spence and and uh, Karras are shooting competent numbers from three, I think it's fine because you don't really lose a ton of spacing and you add the playmaking and ball handling. Yeah. So uh, I think really like even more diving into the numbers during the show. The issue was not as much about the scoring, especially from the guards. If you're getting 37 from Kyrie, 27 from Karras, and 16 from Spence, you probably should win the game. It was really the defense, which we've kind of talked about, because even Joe Harris and Torian Prince, not their best games, but they each put up 13 and 12, respectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and let's move on to Torian Prince for a second, because he continues to impress me. I mean, he only shot 410 and 27 from three, but a lot of what he does doesn't show up in the stat sheet. Stat sheet. I mean, a lot of those hustle plays are just something that the Nets – didn't really have last year. I mean, they had a little bit from Jared Dudley, but Torian Prince does it as much high, does it at a much higher level, and he can shoot too. He's really impressed me this year. What do you think about him? I, I love Torian Prince. I think there's a lot of potential. I think he's going to be a guy that benefits from the Nets coaching staff, infusing it with confidence because we've seen some really nice drives from Torian Prince attacking closeouts. It just seems like he hesitates at times, and if he can get to doing that consistently, I'd be very happy. And then defensively on Jaron Jackson, thought he did a solid job. There was a couple plays where he probably slacked off at the three-point line, but still very happy. And another thing I like about Prince is his toughness. He gives the Nets a little bit of a grit. Uh, John Morant had scored on the Nets. He was talking shit to Torian Prince. Next play, uh, Morant tried to drive to the rim, and Prince hit him with a hard foul. Like, you know, you don't want to injure anybody, but he's trying to set the tone for this Nets team. He was the first guy up when uh, Bobby Portis was getting into it with Kyrie, too. Yeah, no, Torian Prince was just, I mean, he's really impressed with me, not only, like you said, with the leadership. I mean, being able to stand up for your teammates, and then with those gritty hustle plays that he's been able to provide for the Nets, I mean, creating turnovers, saving plays. I, I, extending plays. I mean, it's just really incredible what he's been able to, I wasn't expecting it. I, I followed him a little bit in Atlanta, but, I mean, just he's he's been amazing since he's come to the Nets. Yeah, a real plus, and he looks like he can play the four for the Nets the entire season. Talking about another forward who's kind of had an up-and-down start, obviously, still only three games. What have you thought about Rodion so far? He, I don't think that he's playing enough for me to have a negative view on him. Uh, he only had 11 minutes tonight, uh, one of three from the field. Um, I think against the Knicks, he was really hesitant, taking a lot of shots, and tonight he also only took three shots into his 11 minutes. I think that he's been okay. He's someone that the Nets, I know, want to play the four. I don't know if he has the strength to do that yet, but if he can, I think he'd be really solid because I know he can knock down that long-range shot if he has it. But I think the key for him is, does he have it? And he hasn't had it yet this season. He also had um, four fouls in only 11 minutes, and I think that Yes, he's playing tough, but at some point you need to be careful with that. Yeah, there was one specific play, I believe it was in the third quarter, where like 28 seconds ago, he got the loose ball, the rebound, went into transition, which he probably shouldn't have, ended up force, uh, turning over the ball and then fouled in the same possession, kind of making the mistake even worse. So that's the type of thing that you need to clean up from Rodion's, not play as emotionally. But I think player-wise, we pretty much covered it. What did you think about Kenny never using his challenge flag? You know, the challenge system is new. I understand him being hesitant to use it because I think he's going to be the type of person who wants to see, you know, what type of plays are being overturned and what type of plays aren't before he starts using his because you only get one per game. Um, There are definitely a couple plays last night that could have been challenged, but I think this early in the season that it's okay that he's being hesitant. I think that if this was 
later in the season, if this was a really important game that the Nets needed, I think that we would have seen him use it. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a fair argument if he used his challenge flag in the Minnesota game, and in this game, the Nets win both games. Obviously, it depends on the refs overturning the call, because Jaron Jackson was clearly out at the end of regulation last night when he touched the ball, and then there was a couple fouls they could have called against Minnesota, but I like to see Kenny use it. I mean, you get one, you might as well use it. It's not like you're gaining any money by not using it or anything like that, so... Um, it'll be interesting if he makes that adjustment. And overall, I just want to see the team, I think, coming up against Wednesday against the Pacers, come out with more energy defensively to start the game. I think a good yeah. first quarter will go a long way for them. Especially because the Pacers haven't had a hot start this year. They've been um, really bad offensively. So I think this is an opportunity for us at home to really get it going. Yeah, and, and take advantage of teams that don't necessarily have – dominant ball handlers obviously Malcolm Brogdon's a solid ball handler for the Pacers but other than that a lot of guys aren't super comfortable creating for themselves same thing could have been said about Memphis last night but the Nets didn't capitalize on that and that's where they just need to turn up that defensive energy because there are plenty of capable defenders it's just them not putting in the effort yeah and it's always the um it's always the extra effort that really gets those defensive plays to go and we haven't been seeing it yet Exactly. Get the deflections up. We've seen them run zone a couple times. It seems like the new guys aren't really comfortable with the zone yet. It might take a couple weeks before that happens. But, Will, anything else you want to throw in about the Nets and Grizzlies game? I guess the one thing we didn't touch on, what would you think about Spencer missing the free throw at the end that essentially led to the loss? Mm, he went 8 of 10. I mean, you're going to miss a free throw if you shoot 10 free throws usually, so I'm not too mad. I mean... Look, would it would it have been nice if he made it? Yes, but I'm I can't be too mad. I mean, we should have won that game easily, so I can't be mad at him for making missing that one shot. Yeah, I mean, when you give up 35 points in the first quarter of the Memphis and then 33 in the third quarter, can't really blame one shot. But obviously, uh, a made free throw by Spencer there and a made free throw by Jared Allen, we might be looking at a different record. But as always, thank everybody for listening. Will, thanks for hopping on, and you can check out the show on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, OTGBasketball.com, that's Google Play, Dash Radio, and YouTube.